Eventually, I made my way into Arizona territory and took a job protecting the Army's cattle herds along the Mexican border. It was a no man's land down there, where most scores were settled with bullets. And something about that appealed to me. Soon I was being sent on scouting missions to chase down my favorite targets, cattle thieves. Tom Horn hated a thief. If there was anything he hated, it was a thief. He felt that the law required that these thieves be eliminated. To hunt my targets successfully, I needed to learn the terrain. And no one knew it better than those whose ancestors had lived here for centuries. He lived around the Apaches for some time. He picked up their language. He was fluent in Spanish. And so he made himself very useful to the military establishment in Arizona in the 1880s. He was a tracker a very good tracker, meaning he could follow footprints of people who had gone before him. My methods are clinical. I patiently track the target, find the lookout, and then draw a bead. Tom Horn was an efficient detective and assassin. His MO was to do a clean shot to the head and be done with it. So we got done cleaning it. Action's a whole lot smoother. My reputation as a tracker soon caught the attention of the US Cavalry, which was fighting a fierce guerrilla war with the same Indians I had come to know so well. The Apaches were a mountain people, not large in number, but tenacious warriors. Pound for pound, they were the tigers of the human race. There were occasional bolts of uh, Apache warriors who would leave the reservation and go off on raids. I had just the kind of experience and bravado needed to track the rogue Apaches down. The Army's civilian chief of scouts in Arizona, Al Sieber, personally recruited me to the cause. From that point on, I took part in almost all of the Apache campaigns. I take great pride in having helped corral the last of their warriors. These battles had a very hardening effect on Tom Horn because women and children were killed indiscriminately. I don't get any indication that Horn felt any remorse. This was a practical matter. He was doing what the US government had authorized him to do. By the summer of 1886, we had beaten all but a few Apaches into submission. But one band of relentless fighters still eluded us. They were led by the tribe's most notorious leader, a man I was determined to capture, or, if need be, kill. Geronimo. 